Today we're going to print a black and white 24 inch by 20 of my son climbing on something he shouldn't that I took a year ago. We were on a family walk and he's climbing on this big statue that I think is made out of metal and it's just a fun picture. First we're going to learn how to install the Canon professional print and layout software. Search for your printer model. In my case, I searched Canon Pro 4100 and print and, and software and downloads. And it'll take you to this page. You need to select your operating system and select the professional print and layout software and then click download. Once that's downloaded, click open. And unfortunately things are showing up on the wrong screen. So I'll have to drag them over to my secondary monitor that I'm recording on. There's just a standard wizard, install the software to pick your region, pick your language, accept the usual license agreement, all that stuff. It's gonna ask you if you want to follow the display for the new users, the, the guide. That's just going to take you to a website. You can go ahead and open it, open it. After you click on that, now you can tell it that you have a printer, that this is what the, the guide for the new users looks like. So in my case, I need to click OK. And then click Find Printer. It should find my printer with the um, Pro 4100 printer name, my IPv6 address in this case and my serial number. Now it's going to start acquiring the media profiles that I've already installed on my printer because I've used a different computer for talking to my printer in the past. Since we're installing it on my laptop so I can work out in the um, apartment, it's got to pull the media profiles from my printer onto my laptop. The Pro 4100, I think, can have 124, maybe 128 profiles. I'm trying to remember that specifically. If later you need to update the media profiles because you've added more from another computer, you need to click that button on the edit or file other settings and then import media profiles. OK, we're going to start over here on the right under settings. I'm going to pick single image, then we're going to pick the paper type since we've installed that. Now we should be able to get it. We want the Red River Premium. There it is. These are not alphabetized. We want Premium Matte. Now if we click Get Information, this will get the information of what is on the roll one. I've already loaded the Red River Premium Matte 24 inch roll and it knows that on my printer. Now I need to select the paper type or paper size. So it knows what's on the roll. I'm going to tell it what size of paper to create in this little layout manager. So what you see in white in the main screen. Once we've selected the right size, then we can select the size of the image that we want to print on that. The offset of the borders and everything else. There's a 20 by 24 available, but I don't actually want to use that. If I select that um, and then I show on the paper roll, uh, you can see that it's actually the opposite direction that I want. So I need to create a custom 24 by 20. So I have to scroll all the way up to the top and I can input the custom size. Specify custom size, click add. I give it a name, 24 by 20. I have a width of 24, a height of 20, and I click OK. Now when I click OK, the paper size is loaded, but it's not automatically picked. So I need to go up to the top to my custom ones, 24 by 20. Now you can see it's actually the right aspect ratio that I was expecting. OK, let's go back to the top, Red River Paper, 24 by 20. We don't want borderless printing. We want roll one. We want to select the print quality. High is, I think, the middle one. Yep. Then clear coat auto. That's fine. We're going to center it. 
the register layouts, custom, that's fine. Apply to all pages, image slot position. Okay, this is how you define where on it, the page it is. You can specify the top, bottom, left, and middle if I use position and margin, or if I use position and size, it grays out the position and I just specify the size. I can verify my aspect ratio by setting the height to one and I see that my width is 1.1. That means my slot size is not the four by five that I expect, otherwise it would be one by one. Okay, so if I left click and I pick the slot size, now it will actually have the aspect ratio I want. See on the right how it said 20 by 24? Now if I drag this, it keeps that aspect ratio and I can see how much space I want on it. I'm gonna leave 0.9 inches and um, so I'm going to do 19.1 by 22.92. And I'm going to specify the ICC profile. In order to do that, we need to get the profile from Red River's website. From Red River's website, if you go to printing help under resources, there is a color profile. We want to select our printer. I'm, I've got the Pro 4100, so I'm going to select that. Then when I click find my profile, it's filtered to the link specific to my pro, uh, my printer. Okay. I do not want the polar mat. I want the premium mat. It doesn't matter which one I pick. They're all going to have the same ICC profile. The AM1X profile might be different on them, but the ICC profile is going to be the same. That's the color mapping. The media profile is going to tell the print head how high to go and things like that. Okay, now that I've got it displaying the details, I can see the AM1X file and the ICC. Just double click on the ICC profile that installs it on your computer. If you pick on accident to change the color mode to black and white, you won't be able to see a profile. It'll be great. Click back on that and switch to use ICC profile. Then you can select your profile. In this case, it's going to be towards the bottom. Um, the custom ones are going to be down there. I have premium matte and I have the Pro 4100. We're going to use black point compensation. And then we're going to use the um, pattern print. Pattern print only lets you click on it if you actually have an image selected. So I need to put my image on the, the actual slot. Now when I go to color settings, I can see pattern print. So I click on pattern print. I'm going to select, I don't want to do chromatic. I want to do brightness and contrast because I'm doing a black and white. So I want to see if this works on a 24 inch roll. I've never tried this before. The biggest paper size that lets me pick is a three. I'm gonna waste a little bit of paper because of that. Uh, but that's fine. I want to see where, what brightness do I want to actually use. And you can see from soft proofing that the top left is going to be bright, the bottom right is going to be dark. And I can change the pattern size and the amount of uh, changes, or the, 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 how big the change is. Now when we hit print, it will ask, hey, is this what you want to print on? Is this the size you want? And it's going to go to the printer. Okay, so when it prints out, it has a B and a C. Each of these is how much delta to do on the brightness and the contrast. So if you picked a brightness of the bottom left one, minus 10, and a contrast of minus 10 in the, gen in the color settings, then it, that's what you would, you, it would look like when you printed it out. I liked the top left where the contrast was a little bit lower and the brightness was a little bit higher, but I wanted a leave, a leave even a little bit brighter. I want 15 instead of 10. And I'm gonna lower the contrast down to minus 10. Okay, let's hit print and see what happens. Just double check these settings. Okay, 
Everything looks good. Now we're going to hit print and we'll see what happens. Watching the paper come out. There's the hard proof we have laying on top. And oh, there we go. Now we're printing. You can see the printhead moving. This is natural speed. And this is how fast it comes out. It's going to take about three minutes to print this 24 by 20 image. The actual image size was 19.1 by 22.8, I think. And this is what it looked like when we're done. I think it turned out pretty well. So thanks for joining me on this little adventure.